hi guys welcome to the next video of the structure tutorial series in this video we will continue with the input validation techniques which we started in the last video we've already seen the setup for the XML validation and we have seen the required string in action in this video we are going to check few more of the built-in validators so let's check the string length and email validators in this video there are so many built-in validators available which I'm sure after seeing a couple of videos can easily be configured and explored. Let's check the string length validator first. Now we use the string length validator to validate that a field value is of a certain length. Now we can specify the minimum and maximum length which a field can contain through the min length and max length parameters of the string length validator. So we'll be able to check how to pass parameters to the field validators using this example. Now the only requirement for the string length validator to work is that the field should be non-empty. So we generally should use this string length validator along with the required string validator. And the use case which I have in my mind for the string length validator is on the password field. Now suppose we have a requirement that the password field should contain from 4 to 14 characters. So let's use our string length validator to achieve this validation for the password field. Now we already have a required string validator for this. So let's add one more validator here. Let's copy paste this. change the message as password must be between 4 and 14 characters let's add the parameters for min length and max length it 14 okay that's it guess what we've added the validation for the password field let's test it out let's give two characters here and then log in okay so we are able to get that error that password must be between 4 and 14 characters so our string length validator is working fine now let's move to the email validator. Now I'm thinking to use this login user ID, this user ID for the email validator. So instead of user ID, what we'll do, we'll use email ID as the user ID. Now this user ID field here will contain the email provided by the user and we will validate the email ID using our email validator. So let's add the email validator for our user ID field. in the validation XML make it email we we'll make the short circuit as true so that if the required string validator fails this will not continue with the email validator. Okay, change the message. Should be in correct format. Now let's test this out. Okay, now let's give an invalid format of email ID here. Something like this. Then hit login. We are able to get the error for the email ID as well. That email ID should be in the correct format. So our email validator is working fine. And uh, I'm going to discuss one more validator called visitor validator in the next video. I hope you like this video. Uh, thanks for watching.